Tennessee Football Classics, Vintage Orange, is brought to you by First Tennessee Bank, the official bank of the Vols, by State Farm Insurance, and the more than 400 State Farm agents in Tennessee who support volunteer football. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Ford and your Tennessee Ford dealers, where you'll find quality people, quality products throughout Tennessee. And by Budweiser. Choosing a designated driver is always a good game plan. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Kessling of the Ball Network, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Football Classics Vintage Orange. There was plenty of anticipation about the 1972 Tennessee Volunteers. One of the reasons, number seven, sophomore quarterback Condridge Holloway. Remember, in 1971, freshmen weren't eligible for the varsity, so Holloway was dazzling on the Tennessee freshman team in 1971. Tennessee fans got a taste of what was to come on that freshman squad, and now they were looking forward to Holloway leading the varsity. In 1970, Tennessee won 11 games. In 1971, the Volunteers won 10. They won their bowl games in both of those years. So entering 1972, Tennessee fans expecting Holloway to take Tennessee to even bigger and better heights. Now here's a look at the 1972 Tennessee Volunteers, narrated by the Vol Network's John Ward. When everything goes right, a football play is a thing of beauty and excitement. But the good moments don't come easily. Getting ready to make the play picture perfect on Saturday is rough and tough, mentally and physically. The 1972 season had the earliest starting date in Tennessee history. September 9, Grant Field, Atlanta, on national TV. Tennessee against rejuvenated Georgia Tech, fired up under a new coaching staff. Sophomores held the key to Vol hopes as the season began. The Vol offense shows men in motion, shifts, and moves the ball consistently. Like on this pass from sophomore quarterback Condridge Holloway to Oak Ridge, Tennessee's Emmon Love. The pass sets up this field goal by the barefoot boy from Dalton, Georgia, Ricky Townsend. A sophomore who became a legend in one week and kept the legend alive through a record-breaking season. Tennessee leads Georgia Tech three to nothing. Holloway is extra sharp on offense, but this play, an offensive mistake, might well have been Holloway's biggest play of the year. Tex McKenzie intercepts Holloway's pass in the flat and appears on his way to a Georgia Tech touchdown. But wait, that's Holloway streaking downfield to catch him from behind, and Tech has to settle for a field goal instead of a touchdown. The ball offense is rolling again. Bill Rudder, playing tailback in this game, hits the middle, then slips to the outside and pounds into the end zone from seven yards away to give the Vols a 10-point lead. Once again, Bill Rudder, named TV back of the week in the game, is in the spotlight. Only this time, the Winchester Tennessee Junior makes a rare passing effort, complete for a touchdown to junior Chip Howard from Knoxville. 
and the balls are off and running. In the fourth quarter, junior Gary Valbuena is at quarterback, and he shows his rifle arm on this scoring pass to Love as the balls roll to an impressive season-opening 34-3 win over Georgia Tech. University of Tennessee. George Holloway in Tennessee, very impressive in the opening game of the 1972 season. 34-3 was the score as Tennessee rolled over Georgia Tech. Game two brought a lot of national headlines to Knoxville. Penn State had come to town in 1971. Tennessee won 31-11. Joe Paterno vowed he wouldn't come back in 1972 because it was too hot. Tennessee had to have lights before the Nittany Lions would return. Well, guess what? There were lights at Neyland Stadium in time for the 1972 Penn State game, the first night game ever at Neyland Stadium. The 1972 opening home game was the first night game ever played at Neyland Stadium. The largest crowd in Tennessee history, over 72,000 fans are on hand to see Tennessee play Penn State. And Shields Watkins Field shines like an emerald in the night. Haskell Standback sparkled too. Behind a brilliant block at the corner, the junior speedster turns it on in the first quarter and races 41 yards to give the Vols a lightning-like seven to nothing lead over the Nittany Lions. Penn State's All-America quarterback, John Huffnagel, an outstanding member of an outstanding team, faces a fierce Tennessee pass rush is jarred by linebacker Eddie Wilson, Huffnagel fumbles, and Carl Johnson recovers to get the Vols in scoring position once more. In the second period, Steve Chancey of Knoxville makes one of the year's great runs as he fights for 22 yards to pay dirt, and the Vols open up a 21 to nothing halftime lead over Penn State. The Vols needed all those points and more because Penn State came back strong in the second half gained the momentum and closed the gap to 21 to 14. The pressure is definitely on the Tennessee offense to sustain a drive, to use the clock, to stop the Lion momentum, and to get some points. Holloway gets things moving on an 80-yard drive with this 19-yard fourth period pass to tight end Sonny Leach. The Vols continue the final period drive. 13 plays, more than six minutes. Now it's second and goal at the state nine yard line when the quarterback makes this miraculous pitch and stand back a daring catch, then sweeps to the Lion two yard line. It's third down and goal as stand back swings around the left side for the touchdown and Tennessee outbattles a fine Penn State 11, 28 to 21. Two crucial games, two impressive wins. Tennessee rolls to its third win of the year over Wake Forest, 45 to six. A game of big plays, scoring bombs, like this Holloway to Howard Ariel. Then came this 52 yard pass play from Valbuena to Knoxville sophomore Neil Claybo who showed continuing improvement as the Tennessee punter all year long. But there was little time for celebration because the next Saturday, it was on to Birmingham for the traditional battle with Auburn at Legion. The Tigers, always tough. But I knew when Auburn came on the field and Tennessee came on the field, the game and go to the fourth quarter, which it did. Uh, we went in there. I don't think we were overconfident. We went in there with a 3-0 record and uh, played pretty good games against Penn State and Georgia Tech. Over 15,000 Tennessee fans were in Birmingham for the game, a game where field position was the key. Tennessee got good field position in the first quarter on this fumble recovery by Jamie Rotella at the Auburn 30. But the drive is thwarted by a 15-yard penalty against Tennessee and then Auburn begins an 81-yard scoring drive that carries into the second quarter. Auburn and its durable tailback, Terry Henley. 81 yards, 16 plays, 7 minutes. Henley carries the ball 10 consecutive times and ends the drive with this burst over left guard to give Auburn a 7-0 second quarter lead. Auburn gets only one first down in the second half 
but this Valbuena to Chip Howard pass, a touchdown toss of 30 yards for the balls in the fourth quarter was not enough. Auburn upsets Tennessee 10 to six. Well, we were all really uh, shocked that we had lost the game. Football's a funny game, but I think the most important aspect of it is sometimes you're gonna get knocked down, but you have to get back up. And if you don't, you'll never be a winner. The Vols are now three and one as they make their annual trip to Memphis. The offense looks potent again against Memphis State as Stanback gives the Vols an early lead with this 25-yard run. But the play to be remembered was an interception by Art Reynolds, linebacker from Cincinnati. The interception was followed by a 96-yard return by Reynolds. A convoy of swifter Vols lead Reynolds into the end zone, and Tennessee beats Memphis State 38-7. Big play on defense. It's become a Tennessee tradition in itself. The seniors talk. If you throw our front four and our linebackers up against anybody, you couldn't find a group that was more consistent. They, uh, they made the big plays when they had to, but when it got down to the grind, our front four and linebackers stuck in there like nobody else could. I think we realized that we didn't have the superstars that teams in the past have had, that no one was any game breaker themselves. We were all about on the same ability, so it was a unified effort, and I think that made us a little bit different. Shot. Welcome back to Tennessee Football Classics Vintage Orange, the 1972 Tennessee Volunteers. Volunteers off to a good start in that 72 season, 4 and 1 when the third Saturday in October came rolling around. A record crowd was at Neyland Stadium to see if Tennessee could knock off the Alabama Crimson Tide. Another overflow crowd was in Knoxville for the Tennessee-Alabama game. The high moment of the season. Almost. We played 58 minutes of uh, perfect football. Tennessee's perfectly prepared defense has stopped the heralded Alabama wishbone. Sophomore Mike Mormon is shown here as he gets to Bama quarterback Terry Davis for a four-yard loss. Then, early in the third period, with Tennessee behind three to nothing, the Tennessee defense makes yet another big play. Alabama fumbles on a pitch out. The ball lies wide open until Art Reynolds recovers just inside the sideline at the Alabama 29. Standback carries the ball six straight times. And on this fourth down play, the junior tailback powers his way for eight yards to the Alabama two. The tide leads three to nothing, but then on second and goal, Holloway fakes, keeps himself, and slides into the end zone. Tennessee leads Alabama seven to three. The Vols are dominating the game on defense and offense as Standback races 22 yards on this run. Key play in a drive which ended in a 36-yard field goal by Townsend to make the Tennessee lead 10-3. Then with two minutes to go, Steve Bachelia sets up a tying Alabama touchdown with this bruising 27-yard run. And only 36 seconds later, Davis scores another Alabama touchdown. And the tide turns defeat into victory over Tennessee 17-10. Coach Bill Battle. I think I tried to draw a comparison to maybe uh, pick our team up a little bit that uh, this experience, although better, a very bitter pill to have to swallow, would have to be swallowed anyway because we couldn't give up. We had a long way to go yet in the season, and we had to maybe use this experience to help us and pull us close, closer together and enable us to go on to a successful season. And we ended up actually playing better ball towards the end of the season. Uh, instead of where maybe another team might have might have quit after that Alabama loss. The next week, Tennessee played host to Hawaii, starting the comeback after the shocking loss to Alabama. Hawaii was beaten 34-2, and the Vols started early, 
scoring on this first play of the game interception and touchdown run back by Conrad Graham. Then it was to Georgia, and the time for the Vols to test pride and toughness, the turning point of the season, especially for the offensive line. It was our job against Georgia to prove that, that we had a good offensive line and that we could come back after losing to a team like Alabama and play a good team like Georgia and prove ourselves in that ball game. The Tennessee offense regained some of the at Athens. Crisp line blocking was the keynote, opening the path for Rudder to romp for 10 yards. The hole is there once more as Stanback charges up the middle for 10 more yards in the first quarter. Straight ahead, the tone of this Tennessee-Georgia game is set. Tennessee scores early in the second quarter on this eight-yard screen pass from Holloway to hard-running Bill Rudder. Tennessee seven, Georgia nothing. The big play came from sophomore tailback Paul Carruthers of Lafayette, Georgia, behind a key block by freshman Terry Moore of Clinton, Tennessee. Carruthers turns the corner and turns on the speed to dash 56 yards to the Georgia 19. The touchdown comes on this 13-yard pass from Holloway to tight end Leach, and the Vols beat Georgia 14 to nothing. Tennessee's record is now six and two, as the Vols race onto Shields Watkins Field through the giant tee formed by the pride of the Southland band before another sellout crowd. It's homecoming 1972, and Ole Miss has come to Knoxville. The Vol offense, which regains some sparkle in the Georgia game, continues to click as Holloway drills this 21-yard pass to Emmon Love in the second quarter. Five plays later, Stanback gets a brilliant block from Chansey, turns the corner, and culminates an 80-yard drive with this 16-yard touchdown run. Tennessee seven, Mississippi nothing. Bill Rudder, like Chancey, injured for much of the year, appears back at full tilt as the junior fullback powers 34 yards to the Ole Miss 20 in the third period. The Vols go on to score and build a 17 to nothing lead over Ole Miss. Again in this game, timely interceptions help stop the Rebel drive. Do interceptions just happen? You study it every day and you get to look for a certain tendency you know and you're going to hope that they're going to pass the ball every down because you want to see the defensive backs go out there and intercept the passes interceptions really start start on monday you start planning the game you look at the uh the routes that they run you look at the receivers you're going to be covering but the main thing is that that we're all working together keying on the same keys and know exactly what the other man's thinking at all times and then when we play our different defenses, we key the same key and go to the positions so it will synchronize perfectly and, and just oneness, I guess. Tim Towns from Knoxville makes his first career interception in the Ole Miss game. Towns is almost as jubilant as his teammates, and he fully intends to hold on to the football from now on. Late in the game, Graham, who intercepts seven passes in 1972, makes another big one to ensure Tennessee's shutout for the second straight week. Tennessee beats Ole Miss 17 to nothing, and the balls are seven and two with two games to go. The two games left are the traditional battles with Kentucky and Vanderbilt. Tradition, a big part of Big Orange football. And the things that have happened uh, 40 and 50 years ago affect us very much now through uh, how educated our fans have become to football and to winning football. And there's something about playing down there in front of 75,000 people every Saturday that, that kind of pumps adrenaline up and makes you play that, that much harder. I think that uh, 
the fans who will go anywhere in the country uh, to watch Tennessee play uh, are very much a part of our success at Tennessee. Kentucky's record was three and seven, but the Wildcats played like it was seven and three and grabbed a seven to nothing lead over Tennessee. But the Vols stormed back. First on this 49 yard pass play from Holloway to Love in the first quarter, moving the ball from the Vol 40 to the Cat 11. The tying comes on this eight yard run by Rudder behind great blocking as the offensive line opens a big hole at right guard and Rudder rams it in to tie the score seven to seven. Tennessee gets the ball with one eight left to go in the first half and executes the two minute drill to perfection running six plays to set up this 46 yard field goal by barefooted Ricky Townsend his longest field goal of the year on the final play of the first half. Tennessee leads 10 to 7. The clincher comes in the fourth quarter after an interception by the ever-present Graham. And it was the flashing standback who gallops 30 yards to score and gives Tennessee a hard-fought 17 to 7 win over Kentucky. By beating the Wildcats at Knoxville, Tennessee had won its eighth game for the eighth year in a row the only major college team in America to accomplish this feat. And then came the finale at Nashville against Vanderbilt. The Commodores grab an early 3-0 lead, but the Vols rest the lead away early in the second quarter on this nine-yard run by Standback. Tennessee leads Vanderbilt 7-3. The Kannapolis Jr. gets his second touchdown moments later on this perfectly executed pitch from Holloway. Standback sets a new season rushing record of 890 yards in this game. Vanderbilt comes back, closing the gap to 16 to 10. But the Tennessee offense mounts two fourth period drives to ice the victory. This pass play is good for 39 yards to senior Dennis Chadwick of Decatur, Georgia. And it's the exciting Holloway who caps the ball victory as he hurdles into the end zone. And the Vols have a 30 to 10 win over Vanderbilt and a trip to the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl. The Southeastern Conference setting this. He closed out the 1972 season with five victories. The end of the year, nine and two, and accepted a bid to play LSU from C and the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl at the Astrodome in Houston. The sign at the Astrodome says it. Welcome to the Astrodome, eighth wonder of the world. For the Astro Blue Bonnet. Forward to the 20 yard line where it will be first down and tend to go actually at the 30, a return to Danton, who bangs the right side of the line for a yard. Jones, the quarterback, wearing number seven, fading to pass, keeps up the middle, and for good yardage, battling very, very close to a first down. Short by about a yard. And from the sideline camera, here is Chris Danton, running through for the first down and tend to go. Game just getting underway. The pitch is to Danton. Danton circles the right side of the line and upfield for sizable yardage. 16 yards all told. Johnson follows to make the play, and but it's first down and 10 to go at the volunteer 40 yard line. Once again, it's Danton. This time stacked up by Rotella leading the charge after a gain of three. Jones to pass, looking for Williamson. Pass is complete to his tight end for 18 yards. Graham makes the time. From the sideline viewpoint, the trailing is Danton. Good block on the corner. Then it's Allen who recovers from the block with Reynolds to stop him after a gain of three. Danton up the middle this time, 55 is there. That was Reynolds, a gain of a yard. It's third down and six to go. As Jones completes the pass, 
but immediately Danton is racked up by Graham short of the first so it's fourth down and two at the Tennessee 11 yard line and in to attempt the field goal of 29 yards good is Jackson so LSU leads Tennessee three to nothing 11 plays 59 yards for the field goal the kickoff is to Brown Eddie Brown from Gill Tennessee shakes loose at that point turns on the speed and sprints for 40 yards on the return Tennessee first down and 10 to go at the volunteer 40 yard line the quarterback is number seven Holloway back to throw on first down for his wing back Chadwick incomplete broken up by Williams so it's second down and 10 to go Chadwick a senior from Decatur Georgia Haskell stand back from Kannapolis North Carolina fights left guard for three yards third down seven three nothing LA pass scramble he'll run breaks a tackle there spins out of bounds it's first down to see after the game of 12 yards by Holloway ball at the 45 yard line of LSU Holloway 7 41 that's Chansey junior from Knoxville Tennessee grinding out nine yards around the right side of the line second down a yard to go three nothing LSU leads in the first quarter of the Blue Bonnet Bowl game Chansey up the middle fighting for first down yardage he's got it first and ten at the LSU 32 stand back spins off his own blocker and Cormier makes the tackle after a gain of three yards second down and seven Holloway back to throw again looking his receivers covered he'll scramble and he'll gain and he'll skip downfield for 11 yards and a first and 10 at the LSU 18 yard line Tennessee sends a man in motion the linebacker reacts skips forward this time for four yards where he's racked up by Seattle and it's second down and six yards to go Holloway this time drops the screen pass out here complete to Haskell stand back breaks a tackle there another one there and fights his way forward for 13 yards and it's first down goal at the six yard line Tennessee trails three nothing Holloway back to pass looking for his tight end there he is Jimmy Young from Franklin Kentucky and Tennessee grabs the lead from LSU going 60 yards in 11 plays with the touchdown pass from Holloway to senior tight end Jimmy Young six to three the score Holloway holding for the extra point attempt by Ricky Townsend the kick is good Tennessee has made 92 consecutive extra points and the fireworks at the Astrodome tell the story as Tennessee leads by a score of seven to three in the first quarter Townsend the barefooted kicker from Dalton Georgia Booms one this time downfield to Davis and Davis returns at 16 yards out to the LSU 26 yard line Tennessee leads seven to three Jones on a delay Tennessee reacts well Rotella and Wilson the linebackers make the stop on Davis gain of three second and seven at the 29 Jones pass this time is momentarily caught then shaken loose and ruled incomplete Kegley had his hand on it he was flipped up by Conrad Graham third down long and this is Carl Johnson who battles through to put the pressure and throw Jones for a loss of eight yards forcing Jackson into punting a punting situation and here it is punting downfield to Eddie Brown who earlier returned a kickoff 40 yards the wall is there and here the Gill Tennessee junior spins downfield for a return of 37 yards on the punt of 39 and Tennessee's back in business first down and 10 at the LSU 24 yard line leading seven to three. 85 out near you is Emin Love. Holloway passes. The pass is complete. This is Standback. And Standback carries the ball forward for a gain of nine yards. It will be second down and one to go at the 15 yard line. Tennessee leads seven to three. 
Holloway looked like a, a busted play and was, but Holloway finds running room on the outside. There he is into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Holloway on a broken play circles the left side of the line and streaks 15 yards for the touchdown. The sophomore from Huntsville, Alabama, having a sensational evening in the Astrodome as Ricky Townsend kicks the extra point good and Tennessee leads LSU by a score of 14 to three. Condridge Holloway, sophomore, Huntsville, Alabama, the Tennessee quarterback. The kickoff is taken this time by Davis and he powers his way back up field for 17 yards where Hank Walter, sophomore linebacker from Knoxville makes the tackle. It'll be first and 10 at the 28 yard line. The quarterback is Lyons, who is replacing the starter. And this is Lyons keeping and scrambling forward for a gain of nine yards, tripped up by Towns, the safety from Knoxville, a senior. Second down, a yard to go. Rogers running a tailback, battles for the first down and has it. First and 10 at the LSU 41 yard line. Tennessee leading 14 to three. Lyons scampering outside, twists forward for a gain of three. Art Reynolds makes the tackle on him. Lions back to throw, looking downfield. The pass is intercepted. That's Tim Towns who picks it off for Tennessee. And Towns returns the ball downfield, 21 yards. Tennessee has it at the LSU 43 yard line. In motion, that's stand back. Holloway having a sterling evening. Pass complete. Here is Bill Rudder from Winchester, Tennessee. Running room. There you see him powering his way downfield all the way to the LSU 22-yard line. A gain of 21 yards on the screen pass from Holloway to Rudder. Rudder number 36. Stand back 24 in motion toward you. The give to Rudder. Crunching up the middle behind the blocking of Emmendorfer. Eurobeck. Schaefer. Gain of about two yards. Tennessee is penalized 15 yards for holding. So Tennessee fighting a long situation has Holloway passing complete to Chadwick for 20 uh, for nine yards and it will become second down and 16 to go as the second quarter gets underway. Tennessee now moving to your left. Second 16 at the LSU 28 yard line. A holding infraction. Move the Vols back to make it first and 25. Here's the pass. There it is, complete to the tight end, slicing through the middle. That's Jimmy Young again, who earlier scored a touchdown. This time it's good for 11 yards, third and five. Pass to Emmon Love, tries to get running room outside. Fine defensive play by Cormier, stops him, pushes him back downfield. And Tennessee is forced into a fourth and four situation. Into the game, counting his teammates to make sure they're 10 along with him, is Ricky Townsend, who boots the field goal attempt. It is a 33-yard attempt, and as you see, it is good. So, with 13.47 left to go in the first half of the game, Tennessee leads LSU by a score of 17-3. And here is Townsend again, kicking off downfield. Miley makes the reception, and he returns the ball upfield, where LSU will put it in play first down and 10 to go. Quarterback once again is Burt Jones. Handoff, Brad Davis. Caught from behind, that's Carl Johnson playing an outstanding defensive football game for Tennessee. Gain of two, second and eight at the 25. Pass across the middle, bang! That was Tim Towns who puts the lick on the intended receiver, Ledoux. Third down and eight to go. Jones again back to pass, will run out of there, but this time waiting on him to spin him to the ground on the draw attempt was Reynolds. So it's fourth down, seven yards to go as Tennessee's defense becomes stiffer and stiffer. The Vols lead 17 to three. It's Jackson to punt. Deep for Tennessee, Eddie Brown. He already has had two outstanding returns, one of 40, one of 37 yards. This time LSU right on the money and Brown is thrown actually for a loss of a yard by Daniel on the punt. So it's Tennessee first and 10 at the volunteer 29 yard line leading 17 to three. Holloway. Stand back, running room, and the junior races for 13 yards. Staggs makes the tackle. It will be first and 10 Tennessee at the 42-yard line of the ball. Stand back, hit in the middle, spins outside, turns on the speed, races downfield this time for 18 yards. 
forced out of bounds by Williamson in two plays. Standback has gone 31 yards. It's now at the LSU 40-yard line. First down, 10 to go. Up the middle, Powers' Bill Rudder showing you the strength of the junior from Winchester, Tennessee. Gain of six, second and four. Now in there, Paul Carruthers, sophomore, Lafayette, Georgia, tries to get outside and is knocked out of bounds. Picked up a yard. Third and three. Holloway spins loose from that tackle. Dragged it forward for a gain of two. It's short of a first. So it's fourth and one. Tennessee elects to go for the first down. Lowering his head and booming forward for the first down is Haskell Standback. Tennessee first and 10 at the LSU 29 yard line. The pitch is to Rudder, thinks about a pass. The receiver is covered, so he's going to run with the football and he gets five yards. Rudder earlier in the year against Georgia Tech had thrown a touchdown pass to Chip Howard. Second down five. Condridge Holloway, the sophomore. Passing complete, that stand back with the ball. Great balance, great speed, great effort. And the junior picks up 14 yards down to the 10 yard line. Tennessee, first down goal to go. Holloway fakes to stand back, pulls it down, will keep at the five, four, three, two, one, touchdown, Tennessee. Holloway, his second touchdown run. This one good for 10 yards on a keeper right. The extra point attempt by Townsend, it's good. And Tennessee leads LSU at halftime by a score of 24 to three. A happy group of volunteers dominating the. Why should you choose a home resort? Life. Campbell's Pool and Spa. <laughs> Welcome back to Tennessee Football Classics Vintage Orange. Tennessee had a comfortable lead at halftime of the 1972 Blue Bonnet Bowl game down in Houston, leading the LSU Tigers 24-3. Looked like the second half was going to be a snap, but the Tigers came back to make things very interesting for the Volunteers. The third quarter, kickoff as Tennessee has the option. LSU kicking it downfield. That was Boca kicking off, and it's Rudder who returns it two yards, slips, and Tennessee has it first and 10 at the 13-yard line. Good blocking up front for Tennessee. Stand back gets four yards. Second and six at the 17. Second half of the game, just getting underway. Stand back this time. Powers over right tackle for three more. It's third down and three. LSU stacking up its defense a little tighter. Holloway, nevertheless, scampering forward and gets his first down to the 24-yard line. First and 10 for Tennessee. Stand back, circles the right side of the line and gets eight yards. Second down and two. Here comes the rush from LSU and Holloway this time is unable to get out of the pocket and he is swarmed under, primarily by Daly for a loss of four yards, third down six. Once again, Holloway back to pass. Once again, the pressure is applied. This time it's Ganey from the other side, nine yard loss. LSU fired up as the second half gets underway. Tennessee fourth and 15 and Claybo is into punt. He spins a beautiful punt downfield. This is Williams under the ball, fakes the handoff, makes a great cut back here, a sensational return as he races downfield after taking the 48 yard punt to return it 36 yards to the volunteer 33. Tennessee leads 24 to three. LSU with the ball. Working his way outside is Kegley. Gain of three yards on the play. Johnson was there defensively. Second down, seven yards to go for the Tigers, trailing 24 to three. Here's Chris Danton with great speed getting outside. Fine blocking up front. And he goes for eight yards and a first down at the Tennessee 22 yard line. Kegley in there to running back. This is he. Big swath in the left side of the Tennessee line. 
as LSU's coming off the ball with authority. Eight yard gain by Kegley down to the 14 yard line. And it is Danton at right guard for two yards and a first and 10 at the Tennessee 12. Kegley gets two. Jones on the bootleg coming right. Thought about a pass, nobody there, runs out of bounds. A loss on the play, Conrad Graham covering. Back to throw is Jones. Here's the pass, it is intercepted right there by Tim Towns, but before he made the interception, Towns interfered with the intended receiver who was Jimmy Ledoux. Pass interference called on Tennessee, and so LSU will have the ball. First and goal at the Tennessee one-yard line. Davis trying the right side of the line, but Tennessee stacks it up. Towns was there, also Graham, the whole left side of the line. Ball actually at the two. Here is Jones on a keeper, and Jones st stretches out into the end zone for a touchdown for LSU. 7-12 to go in the third quarter, and LSU in eight plays goes 33 yards after the 36-yard punt return by Williams sets it up. Here's the extra point by Jackson. It's good. Tennessee leads LSU by a score of 24 to 10 in the third quarter. As Rosa kicks off, and it's Brown who makes the catch at the one. Straight up the middle he comes, gets out to the 25-yard line. Tennessee has it first down and 10 to go. The score. 24 to 10 in favor of the Volunteers. LSU getting tougher on defense as well as offense, stopping stand back after a gain of a yard. Holloway cuts up again. He swarmed under this time a gain of three. Boutard was there. Third and six. Holloway passing downfield, intending it for stand back, broken up incomplete. So LSU. Holds Tennessee, fourth and six, and Claybo is into punt. Again, he towers a booming punt. Backing up is Miley. Still backing, 58 yards that punt. Miley over the shoulder catch. This time he's covered better by Tennessee. Stand back made the initial hit. Then it was Trot and Young. The punt is a new record. 58 yards for Claybo. The third period comes to a close. And we pick up the action in the fourth quarter of the contest with LSU in possession. At the Tennessee 15 yard line, first down and 10 to go. This is Ledoux, and Ledoux gets two yards, runs into Reynolds. Second and eight at the 13. Tennessee leading by a score of 24 to 10. Bird Jones rolling left, looking to throw. Who is there? Carl Johnson for a loss of five yards. Senior defensive end and tackle from Palatka, Florida. Big play by Johnson. Tennessee dancing around. Back to throw, this is Jones. Who's there? 59, Carl Johnson, senior from Palatka, Florida. Another big play, two in a row for the senior. A loss of eight, and it will become fourth and 21. LSU has Roca in there to attempt a field goal. It is up, and it is no good, no good. And so Tennessee will have the football at the 20-yard line, stopping the LSU drive. But LSU defensively tightening it up in the middle. Holloway trying to scramble, makes the pitch finally, and stand back. Actually, that's Leach, number 84, who made the catch. No gain on the play. So it's second down and 10 to go. Leach, the tight end from Raleigh, North Carolina, makes the catch as the tight end goes forward for eight yards. And it's third and two. Critical play for the Volunteers. Pitch to Chancey trying to get wide, but LSU diagnoses the play. Great defensive effort by Staggs, and it's fourth down four. Tennessee again forced into a punting situation. Claybo's punt this time hung high, and under the ball for the fair catch is Williams. 34-yard punt. LSU has it at the Tiger 40-yard line. Tennessee 24, LSU 10. Fourth quarter of this football game. Quarterback stopped. Pitch, however, was made by Lyons back to the streaking Davis. And Davis 
races downfield 29 yards. Good play on the end, but the pitch was made at the last second from Lyons to Davis. And LSU powers up the middle with Bingless carrying for four yards, moving it down to the Tennessee 27-yard line. The run by Davis on the pitch from Lyons, 29 yards. This is Lyons keeping, and Lyons at right end, soars downfield eight yards, first and 10, LSU, Tennessee 19-yard line. Hard-running Bingless up the middle this time, churns it out for nine yards. Called well on the tackle for the balls. It's second and 10, uh, rather second and one at the Tennessee 10. And here's that first down yardage by Brad Davis, the sophomore at right end. Rotella makes the tackle, but LSU is coming back, churning it out on the ground. Lions keeping, Lions streaking close to the goal line, upended as he gets down to about the one. The give is to Davis. Davis is stopped short of the goal line. It will be third down and goal to go. Tennessee 24, LSU 10. The give again to Davis, and this time Davis finds the end zone. Touchdown, LSU. Eight plays, 60 yards, 726 left to go on this game. And Tennessee, which led 24 to 3 at halftime, now leads by a score of 24 to 17 as the extra point is made good. And LSU making a great second half comeback. The pressure on the Volunteers. And on the Tennessee offense. This is Carruthers. And Carruthers almost broke it. He returns it 27 yards. The Volunteers have it at the 27 yard line. First down, 10 to go. Haskell stand back. Still running with authority. Over right tackle this time, three yards. Second down, seven. Holloway, who scored two touchdowns on scrambles in the first half, scrambles here at the 30, at the 35, diving forward to the 40-yard line where it will be first down, 10 to go. Big first down for Tennessee, using up some of the clock. The Vols lead 24 to 17. Holloway keeps again, this time for five yards at left end. Up to the 45-yard line, second down, five to go. Rolling right to throw, feels the pressure. Dumps the pass, intended for Rudder, broken up incomplete. Third down, five to go. Holloway drifting back to pass. Here comes the pressure. There's the tackle, it is Pass who makes the tackle on him. For a loss of seven yards in Tennessee, has fourth and 12, leading 24 to 17, the momentum with the Tigers of LSU. Claybo to punt, the punt is away. Miley asked for and makes the fair catch. LSU has the ball. First down and 10 to go. Brad Davis, the sophomore running back, powers over right, the right side of the line, moving it forward to the 35-yard line. Then the pass downfield is complete. It's taken by Boyd. A gain of 20 yards down to the volunteer 43-yard line. The seconds are ticking away, but LSU has plenty of time. Burt Jones, the quarterback. Good protection, pass complete. This is Bingless, the hard-running fullback, powering his way deeper and deeper into Tennessee territory. A gain of 22 yards. Reynolds makes the tackle, catching him from behind. Here's Burt Jones with the football, and he is stopped. Coming up to make the tackle for a loss of one yard, the senior from Covington, Tennessee, Claude Simonton. Second down, 11 yards to go. Back to throw Jones. The pass downfield, it is almost intercepted it falls incomplete intended for Kegley broken up by Graham third and 11 LSU trailing 24 to 17 Jones rifles the pass downfield overthrown incomplete it works down to this play fourth down 11 LSU at the Tennessee 22 yard line this is Burt Jones back to looking for Kegley his favorite receiver the pass broken up at the last moment by a diving Conrad Graham Number 37, the All-American from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, breaks up the play. And LSU's drive is stopped. Tennessee has it first and 10 at the Volunteer 22-yard line. Haskell stand back, tries to get outside, but the fiercely bat battling Tigers stop him after a gain of a yard. Second down, nine. Tennessee needs to hold the ball and run out the clock. This is Holloway keeping, Holloway at the 25. Holloway fighting forward to the 32-yard line. It'll be close to a first down. We'll wait and see. 
Holloway says it is a first down. And if so, Tennessee can hold on and run the clock out. It is a first down, and the clock is counting. Three, two, one. Tennessee wins the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl. Coach Bill Battle, in three years as head coach, has won 31, losing five, and has won three straight bowl triumphs. A big win for the Volunteers. The players are happy. The fans, over 12,000 of them at the Astrodome, are happy. And here, the outstanding players. Condridge Holloway, Tennessee quarterback, the outstanding offensive player, and Carl Johnson, senior defensive end, the outstanding defensive player, with coach Bill Battle, as Tennessee beats LSU by a score of 24 to 17 in the 1972 Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl in Houston, Texas. Tennessee completed the 1972 season 10 and two, with a couple of streaks still intact. For one, the Volunteers had won three straight bowl games after the victory against LSU. And also, for three straight years, Tennessee had won 10 or more games. During Bill Battle's first three seasons as head coach, Tennessee won 31, five, and three. Thanks for being with us for this edition of Tennessee Football Classics, Vintage Orange. For the Vol Network, I'm Bob Kessler. Tennessee Football Classics, Vintage Orange. Is brought to you by First Tennessee Bank, the official bank of the Vols, by State Farm Insurance, and the more than 400 State Farm agents in Tennessee who support volunteer football. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Ford and your Tennessee Ford dealers, where you'll find quality people, quality products throughout Tennessee. And by Budweiser, choosing a designated driver is always a good game plan.